Well, it's kind of late, so I wasn't sure if this was a great time to do this, and I've been um, teaching, so I thought I would just give a moment to see if anybody jumps in. Joseph, Margo, hey there. So I was going to just give everybody a good, all right, hey. Hi, Lonnie. Just giving people a chance to jump in. I'm not sure if I have any of my uh, mods here, so we'll find out. Um, I was trying to go live, and then my, um, hey, Donna. Hi, fam, Lori, Kelly, Kay. Good to see you. I, uh, let me see. Okay, so I thought I would just do a, uh, a brief chat about because I really haven't been very active this week. I think some of you know that my dog Owen was diagnosed with, he has a tumor on his arm. And then um, on top of that, you know why it's good to see you guys. Um, no, Gavin's okay. Gavin's fine. <laughs> He's staring at me right now. Gavin's fine. Cruise Boston, rock on. Glad you're here. Do you ever sleep? Um, yeah, I know it's late. It's late, late, late. Um, what happened was I was teaching earlier and then I had, I was going to, I was, I just finished actually, I was going to come on and, uh, do this video earlier. And then, uh, I got a call from the vet and I got, um, <laughs> and I got a, uh, I got some, not so good news. So I'll just say what's going on and then I'll, uh, I'll take a look at the chat. Um, so basically what happened was, I think some of you know, um, I found a, um, you know, dogs get fat pockets, but I found a lump that was pretty severe on Owen's arm and or front leg. And um, Owen will be 13 on July 4th. And Basically, through all the testing and everything, there are certain things that you get good at when you own a pet, all right? So you get like, you get to know like, okay, the calcium is high, that's not good, you know, whatever. So um, Owen's calcium is super high. It's uh, gone up another 10% in five days. So it's going up, up, up. That's usually indicative of cancer. And um, the vet thinks uh, it's his hyperthyroid as well has it and there's just a lot of plus his heart just so you guys know like Owen is um he's a whippet and he's actually eating right now but um his heart like a heart for a dog is supposed to be about 60 percent and Owen's is 90 so it's very enlarged who knows how much time uh he's got and you know the real thing about an enlarged heart just so everybody knows is that when their heart is enlarged, it makes sedation very dangerous. So they actually can't operate on the cancer. Not that it's inoperable, it is operable, but the problem is he might die on the table. And so where do you make that choice, right? You know, where do we, where do we say, well, I mean, we know that ultimately most of the time for our pets we're making the choice. Um, but basically I talked to the vet and that's why I didn't do my broadcast a little earlier. Um, because it start now it's starting to get like super expensive. Um, the, I was talking to my vet about it and he said, well, we can do a, a ultrasound to see where the tumors are. He said, that would be, you know, probably what I would do. And I said, well, but would you do anything past that? And he said, well, you know, I'm not supposed to say, it. I said, I know, but what would you do? <laughs> and he said, oh. I love my dad. He's just such a cool guy. Um, do you want to come over here, Owen? Owen, come here. I'll go pick you up. He's like, I don't know. He's very stubborn. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I know. Um, basically, the um, the vet's great. He basically said, well, Tori, I probably, because I'd want to know, I'd probably do the ultrasound. But at this point, we know the chance that based on these tests, his parathyroid is uh, needs to come out. His he's got the tumor, and we don't know if his spleen has uh, 
has it as well because we kind of saw it on the x-ray. But he said at the end of the day, and I said, I don't think he'll make the anesthesia. And he said, that's what I was thinking. So the thing is, everybody, and I think this is kind of the, um, this is the thing about pets is we love them so. Come here, Oh, you want to come up here? I'm going to grab him so we can say hi. Come here, boo boo. Come here. Just for a minute. I know you're like super heavy. You're still freaking heavy, little man. Oh, so heavy. And he's Okay, here's Owen. And now later, oh, I got a breath. Owen, who's that? Who's that? Hi, sweet boy. So, um, even with everything, um, once we, uh, once we, hey, babe. Hey, babe. Hey. Hey. Um, once we do all that testing, at the end of the day, I think he would, I think he would just go on the table. And I don't, I don't want to put him through that level of trauma. I don't think he'd make it through. I don't think that it's the right thing to do. You know, we love them so, and we want to do the right thing for them because they've loved us to such a degree. And you know, when I was working on the Chakra Wisdom Oracle cards, okay, let me let him down because I don't want him to. All right, that's okay. That's okay. Um, when I was working on the Chakra Wisdom Oracle cards, one of the cards that and they came through was, um, all right, come up and say hi again, um, was Penelope and Pickle. He just can't stand. He's not the center. Oh, you're just a big baby, aren't you? Um, he can't, he, Penelope and Pickle was about a woman who loses her dog. Penelope loses her dog, Pickle. And the title of the fable is Grief is Love Without a Place to Go. And so it's just, um, you know, it's really, it's really just, um, you know, the grief we feel is, is related to the depth of the love we have. And I don't think I'd ever not risk loving a pet. I just, you know, I know people who don't want to go through the pain and believe me, it's like, if I could just take the pain and give it to somebody else, I would, um, but I think what happens is 13 years of your life, in this case, 13, you know, just flash before you because you really, you know, at least for me, I mean, I went through, you know, he has been there through everything. Um, Gavin is such a sweetie. Oh my God. He's burying his head in my lap. That's like, he's, he knows. So um, it's just challenging because um, this is a very transitional time in my business. And so you know, I'm, I'm making a lot of changes and I'm really thinking about, you know, what my next steps are and, and I'll be going out to uh, VidCon, I'm going to do VideoCon in uh, Anaheim in a couple weeks and I'll be speaking, uh, I'm doing a, an, a live event for Coast to Coast and that's a radio program. I'll be doing that on uh, inspirational speakers. I don't know how they asked me, but they did. Don't tell them. Um, so a couple things I want to say, because people were asking me about love and, and they were asking me about, you know, what that looks like in our lives. And I think the thing is, is that for me, it's about living your life to such a degree that you're happy with it. And it doesn't have to look like it looks for everybody else. Right, Kevin? I know. I know. I know. I'll tell them about you. I'll tell them about it. Okay. He's like, tell him I lost my tennis balls today. Okay. Well, um, it's just very difficult because as you're watching, you know, I'm watching Owen fade and, and all of those years that he was a significant chunk of my life is really right there in front of me. Um, so I'm just going to run to chat and say hi to some of you guys. And um, my CV is a chihuahua. Oh, collapsing trachea. Yes. It's horrible. Oh, Donna, I'm so sorry to hear that. I know that feeling. Um, yeah, I think I've made the right decision. Thank you. I think it was uh, uh, Debbie who said that. And, you know, I think that Denise, Denise, uh, P.I. said that. Um, and, you know, I want to say that I know Owen is going to be 13. Uh, Gavin's three. Um, but 
I think that, that the idea of pets in our life, they're so important to us because they are the, they are the reason that, you know, we can live um, in a way without a lot of people because they really just give us that, you know, that love. So it's very hard. I lost uh, Frank, uh, Owen's, Owen's uh, brother's third cousin, but his brother in October of last year. And so here I am eight months later with, you know, with Owen fading. And, you know, it, the, the thing about grief is that it shows up in so many strange ways in our lives. I mean, it's not always recognizable. And um, I think, and I want to say a shout out to Tina Moses. She says, I'm a third rehab nurse. Um, and I want to say thank you for being of service. You know, uh, nursing and, and taking care of people, any kind of a, um, any of you who do that kind of work, I just, my, my heart goes to you. Um, but I think that, you know, I lost my dad. My dad died um, in 2002, um, just four months after 9-11, and he watched the towers fall from his window in New York City. And I think that was a tough loss for me, but don't, don't take this the wrong way. My dad would laugh if he was here, but I mean, it's more traumatic for me to lose my pet because at least with my dad, I had those final talks, you know? Um, no, Dawn, I can't give him painkillers. Um, the reason is his heart is expanded. So because he's an enlarged heart, and I want you to imagine like looking at an X-ray of his chest, right? Cause they give you, they, they took an X-ray. His heart is like literally filling his chest chest cavity. And I said to the doctor, what the, he said, Tori, I don't know how this dog's alive. He said, by these numbers, he shouldn't be here. And I said, well, is this is kind of how God works, everybody. You know, when I put Frank down and when I tell you I put him down, it was like he was gone. Like I woke up that morning and I remember we, I looked at him, he looked at me and I said, buddy, it's time, isn't it? And I had kept him a little longer than perhaps was comfortable, but he didn't want to go and I didn't want to leave him. I didn't want to lose him. So I stayed with him. In fact, I had a speaking engagement at the Omega Center in upstate New York. And I messaged them and said, I can't go, you guys. I have a dying dog. And of course, they were like, oh, yes, I know that's for some people, pets are family. And I'm like, uh, you know, I wouldn't leave anybody that was close to me who was dying. Like I couldn't, do you know what I mean? Like I can't imagine not being there for Frank. Like that was just not an option. And so I, um, I didn't go and it was, it was a, you know, probably a good blow to my career. I should have gone in that sense, but you know, man, there is nothing, nothing like, um, you know, like losing a pet. I'm telling you, for those of you, right, am I right to like, those of you who've lost a pet, you don't even know what, what, like, you don't know it's coming, you know, really. And then it's all of a sudden that, like, holy crap, you know? So it's been a hard time. Um, hey, um, he had ear pain, 400. Oh, I know, I know, Jessica, good to see you. Um, yeah, it's been really hard. I mean, honestly, I, I'm not pulling any punches. Um, I know that, that there's just nothing you can say uh, when you lose a pet. There's just absolutely nothing. And I have friends who've said to me, you know, I'll never get another pet. I have one friend who had a, a cat that um, passed away and he said, never again. I'm just not doing it. I can't stand that pain. And, you know, I remember, I remember feeling when my dad died and I feel that way now, love is always worth the risk. I mean, I, I can't imagine not having that little impossible devil, my little devil in my life. And it's hard because you come in and it's like that space is there. And that's what I mean when I say grief is love without a place to go because that little thing that was following you around that loved you and you loved it or him or her, and you didn't recognize the extent of that love until you experience grief. And so I want to talk for a minute about grief a little bit. And, um, you know, I mean, honestly, I've, I've spent more money than I actually have to, to, to do all these tests. 
And the vet said, well, I said, you know, I don't look, if I thought he had a chance, um, I'd sell my freaking car to, you know, but let's face it, Owen's 13. He's probably not going to survive going under the knife. Um, just because of his enlarged heart, they can't, they can't give them anything for that. And the doc even said, look, you know, even giving him painkillers could be a dangerous move. So what I, what I did was I have some uh, pet CBD oil and, um, I gave him some. The only thing I noticed is he's eating like a horse, you know, he's got the munchies, but you know, um, but it, I want to say about grief because I had a friend of mine who called me because his, his mom had died. And this is a few few years back now. And some of you may have heard me tell the story. But, you know, he he um, his mom died and he was laying on the couch and he said, I just you know what, Tori, I need your help. I need to get off this couch. I need to, you know, I need to be productive. I said, what are you talking about? He said, well, you know, I just I can't just sit here. I said, your mom died a week ago, dude. Like, what do you want to have happen? <laughs> he was like, well, I should be at work. I should be doing stuff. He was a freelancer. And I said, can I ask you something? He said, yeah. I said, did your mother leave you enough money to live for a year, like where you don't have to freaking do anything? And he went, yeah. And I said, let me tell you something. Don't think you're going to invest that money because it's kind of money that you never really like in a funny way. It's not going to do anything for you. He goes, that's true. And I said, so just lay on the couch, you know, just eat bad food and, and watch TV until you're ready to not. And I said, that may be what grief looks like for you laying on the couch. Like for me, what grief looks like is, and I didn't realize it until Frank died last year, that I start getting heart palpitations. And I think my heart's going to just stop. It's like this, you know, and I would have trouble breathing. And now I know that that is the way grief plays out in my life. Owen. Oh, Hey, oh, he's licking his wound. Anyway, you know, that's, I know that's how grief play, you know, shows up in my life. So, um, let's see. Yeah. Owen is still here. He hasn't gone yet. Um, let's see. Um, thank, yes, Kathy, he's still here just for a little, um, you know, it, it's just, and here's what I want to say to you couple things about grief that I think are super important. Number one, please don't tell me you know how I feel if you haven't been through it. Because what happens is it makes the person who's in grief mad. Like it doesn't help. I know how you feel. No, you don't know how I freaking feel. I feel like crap. I just don't want to get up. I feel like my heart's going to stop any second. You don't know how I feel. I don't like the fact that I can't put mascara on and keep it on. You know, like whatever the crazy thoughts you have are. And, you know, I remember somebody said to me once, they said, oh, you know, after my dad died, God, I know how you feel. I said, you do? I didn't know you lost your parents. No, no, no. But um, my... Um, my best friend lost their parents. I said, that's not the same. Like, I understand that you're trying to be helpful, but it's not the same. And, you know, we don't talk about death. And we don't talk about the finality of it. I love when people, and no offense if somebody said this, okay, because I don't mean any disrespect. But, you know, when, and you know I'm kind of woo-woo. You know, I do, like, spiritual stuff and read cards and all that. But, you know, I'm sorry. Like, I know the Rainbow Bridge, blah, blah, blah. But, you know what? He's dead. He's good. not. He's not dead yet. But, I mean... The dog is going to die. And when he dies, it's like, yes, I know he'll always be with me. So please don't come up and remind the person, you know, he's always going to be with you. You know something? That doesn't help me right now because I can't throw a ball to him. I can't call my dad. So don't tell me that they're always with me because that's like, and don't get me wrong. It's like grief has anger mixed in with it. So, you know, all sorts of crazy feelings come up. And I think that when someone loses a pet, here's what I'm going to say to all of you. The thing about losing a pet is this, understanding that you can be there for me, but you can't go through it for me. You can't do the grief for me, but you can be a stand for me. You know, and I think that's like really, it was funny because I was at, um, I was at my, uh, my hairdresser, she and I are good friends and she gave me a little trim and, you know, she, her dog is 17 and she's putting her dog down this weekend because it's really time, you know, blind, deaf, the whole thing and no quality of life. And so 
you know, she said, yeah, I'm just going to take her in. And I said, whoa, 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 no, you're not going to just take her in. She said, what do you mean? I said, I guarantee people are offering to be there, aren't they? And she said, yeah, but I said, no, 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 but pick the person. And I said, I'll go with you, but pick the person who is not going to cater to like, oh, I'm so sorry for you. Pick the person who will be strong for you, but also compassionate and not tell you how to feel. Because you know what the worst thing you can do is tell someone how to feel. Am I right? I mean, don't you, like when people do that, you kind of like go, oh my gosh, you know, um, let's see. Oh, Gail, you're so cute. She adopted pets from the shelter. I'm just looking over here. Um, you have the urn in your china cabinet. That would freak me out. I just want you to know, don't put an urn in my china cabinet. Okay. <laughs> I'd be like, I'd be like, you know, that reminds me years ago, we went, a friend of mine, his father died and we, his father's cremated and, and we went to the funeral home, blah, 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 got the ashes, got the urn. And we went to a diner because that's what you do in Jersey. So we went to a diner. I was living in New York, but I have friends in Jersey. We go to the diner and, you know, we have the urn and we're eating dinner, you know, and just talking, blah, 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 about, you know, his dad. So we finish dinner and we go outside and we get into the car and somebody said, did anybody grab dad? <laughs> Somebody had left the urn in there. So, you know, there's moments, um, <clears throat> there's moments that you just know that, you know, you have to laugh because it's the absurdity of death. I mean, and just, I want to remind everybody to the coincidences that happen. You know, when coincidences happen around losing a loved one, it really is God's way of remaining anonymous because it really is kind of like a God funny where he taps you and says, it's okay. And, <clears throat> you know, oh, Margo, your puppy's next to your bed. I love that. So, and, you know, when Frank died, Frank was, like I said, Owen's, Owen's uh, older brother. Frank was like my heart dog. And I think you guys get this. You, you know, um, it, it, it it's the funny thing about getting another dog is like, um, oh no. Oh, I'm sorry about, about the loss of your daughter. Um, I just noticed that. So I just want you to know, um, license to dance. Wow. My heart's with you. Um, I don't, <laughs> at least you crack me up. He's in the China cabinet because it's the only expensive thing we have. And that's where little Paco is. And I know he's safe there. <laughs> Do you know how funny that sounds? I mean, no offense. He's just like, I'm sure he's like the love of your life, you know? Um, and I think, uh, yeah, you know, so the thing about it is when I, when I took Frank in, he was really ready to go. And then my friend drove, it's funny how God works because the day I said, okay, today's the day. Cause Frank had energetically told me and I went to, I was starting to get things ready and my neighbor's coming in. She said, how are you doing? I told her and she said, oh my God, I'll drive you. And then one of my friends messaged and she said, how are you doing? I said, I got to take Frank. Oh, I'm going to come. So it ended up being three of us that went and it was such a huge blessing because we got there and, you know, they give the dog the medicine to put them to sleep, you know? And my friend was holding Frank. Like I had my hands on him, but I wasn't holding him like underneath. And she was holding him. And she goes, after they get in, the vet said, okay, he's gone. And I, and I kind of still felt him. I said, I still feel him. And she goes, she looks at the vet. She goes, his heart is still beating. Like she, they couldn't kill his little heart. That was just like, to me, like, oh my God, you know? And here it is that, here's Owen with an enlarged heart. How odd is that, that like Frank's heart was just going to keep going and Owen's heart is going to stop. So it's so odd to me that like, there are these moments that you, you recognize the synchronicity of life and death. And I think it's so important that that we recognize what people are going through. I know, but I think also like somebody posted on one of my videos, you know, something about, oh, you're touching your hair so much. And it's like, yeah, I touch my hair. Okay, I touch my hair and um, <laughs> it feels good. Um, and uh, you're touching your hair so much, it's so distracting. And, um, 
you know, and, and basically, hold on, I'll tell you in a second. Aw, Cruz Boston, you are so sweet. I love you dearly. She said, love to Tori's fur babies. Thank you for that. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, you're not only a great mod, you're just, you're really a, a cool person. And I want to just acknowledge you for that. And, and also, uh, Jessica Black Rose, good to see you guys. Um, anyway, oh, what was I talking about? Wait a second, I forgot. Oh, God, I hate this. Mm, do you remember? Let's see. And tell them to shut the front door, touch your hair. Yeah, I'm going to touch my hair just to piss you off. Um, <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, let me piss you off. I'm going to touch my hair. Oh, I know. Yeah, this, okay. So touch the hair. So, yes, I was like, yeah, I'm like having, you know, you have to understand. All right, let me just tell you something about my history and my hair. So when I was, my hair is extremely, extremely thick and frizzy. So if I just let my hair dry, I would have an afro. I'm not kidding. People go, oh, come on. And then my hairdresser was like, holy Toledo, you really do. I go, yeah, like extremely thick, extremely like coarse. So when I was little, they used to call me Wolfie because my hair would just expand to this thing. Anyway, um, Karen Mills, thank you so much for the super chat. I really appreciate it. And Cruz Boston, I, I appreciate it too. And it really, it really helps because honestly, it's like a tough time. It really is. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I mean, I've been busting my ass all week trying to get, you know, products out and things going so that I can, you know, pay off some bills. But um, anyway, so this woman wrote on the uh, thing, you're playing with your hair all the time. It's very distracting. And I, I you know, listen, the, when you're in this kind of state, you're kind of like the first thing you want to do is go, really? And then the next thing is, oh, I think I've got a middle finger for you. But, you know, you don't want to do that. You want to kind of go, look, how can I be reasonable? You know? And I wrote her back and I, I, I wrote on the, and one of my mods had kind of put it for, put it aside for, for looking at it later. And I approved the, the comment. And then I came in and I said, I just want to tell you that sometimes we have to look at you know, the idea of how what we're saying is affecting people. And I think I've said this to you guys before, but let's look at it this way. I said, my dog is dying and I'm not in a great place. And I said, yours was the first comment that I noticed this morning. And so my question to you is, how important is it? In other words, if you had a loved one who was dying, would you want your words to be the last thing they heard? Do you know, God bless her, she wrote back and she said, I'm sorry. You're right. And I thought, we have to be so gentle, man. I mean, look at this guy. Uh, I want to say it's Andika, and, but, oh, License to Dance, thank you so much for the super chat. You were so sweet. Um, let's see, Sonia said, and thank you, uh, CMY22, oh, see my tutu, license to dance, took me a minute, not very good at deciphering it, uh, Sonia Flowers said, um, let's see, when my dad died of a massive heart attack at 51, I was 22, oh my god, I married my then boyfriend three years later, and I didn't want a wedding because of my grief. My mother-in-law told me to get over it. Yeah, I think that, you know, she sounds just, just charming. Um, mods and to remove comments on videos, not live. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly, exactly. Um, okay. Um, so one of the things that I think is really, yes, Sherry, it is about Owen. Um, just I was giving everybody an update on what's going on because I think one of the things that happens is we just kind of, I think things like death and I think things like, uh, especially when they, 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 you know, come into our lives, I think they just get kind of like, brushed aside as we see the before and we see the after and sometimes we see the mascara running but we don't really get the the emotional journey of it and you know um the uh 
Owen was always called my little moo cow because he's got like brown patches that make him look like a cow. And so he would have, he has a, ha a Halloween pa uh, costume, which I will find some of the pictures uh, as a cow. And he went as a cow every year because that was his, and he loved this costume. I have to tell you, it's the, I mean, I literally didn't do Halloween last year because his brother had just died. So it was kind of like, and I don't think Owen really ever got over it. I mean, it, it's hard. And I think that it, it, it's, it's hard for me because there's moments when I go, oh my gosh, no, don't go. You know, and it's funny, you know, <laughs> you know, Moo, right? I've got to show you. I'll, I'll put some of the pictures up in our community uh, post area, but it really is, you know, um, there are some things about Owen that really surprised me that um, that he did that I'd never seen before. Uh, one of them is he would, like a cat, he would climb on the top of the cat, the top of the sofa like this, and he would literally sleep on the top of the sofa. And he was very cat-like. I'd never seen anything like that. Um, and just odd things, you know, and, and they're like people in the sense that, but better, um, but they're like people in the sense that they, they have their quirks, you know, and I love whippets and, you know, these guys are whippets and boy, they, they talk about diametrically opposed personalities. Um, you know, let's see. Um, yeah, exactly. Um, Shun, you just said I never fit in. That's why I relate to Shanann. Um, thank you, Karen Mills. Um, how do I put a pic to my name? Oh, uh, Kat, just, just Google it. Literally, if you Google putting a picture with your name, um, how do I do it on YouTube? You'll just see the instructions and you just put it in. And believe me, if this old dog can figure it out, anybody can. Um, just want to see, um, yeah, there you go. I know. I didn't know you needed a password for Super Chat. Yeah. Um, so here's the thing I want to say about, um, yeah, you know, Margo, I'm glad you said that. I, I did videos of um, Owen is the most photogenic. He was the easiest to take pictures of. Like literally, I mean, the dog is freaking dying. Okay, and he looks fantastic in the photos, and it's kind of like people looking. I said, "Yeah, this is a, one of Owen's final pictures," and somebody messaged me and went, "Like, what do you mean? But he looks great. Yeah, he looks great. Final pictures of the day." I'm like, mm, "That's the problem when you're that freaking photogenic." You know, it's like I don't know. Like, I think that it runs in the family because. Um, and I got to tell you this. Okay. So I've got a little gossip for you. So when I lived in California, I owned a recording studio voiceover. And uh, one day Talia Shire comes in and she's the woman on Rocky. If you remember, she was uh, um, Adrian. Yo, Adrian. Um, and she was also the daughter in the, in the Godfather. Um, Connie. No, is that, no, is that it? Connie? I can't remember the, the sister's name. I can't remember. But anyway, um, no, Owen is on his way out. So, um, I'll, I'll tell you about that in a second. Um, so anyway, so she, Talia Shire comes in one day and I looked at her and I was like, you know, I literally made like a, what? And she went, I know. I said, what? She said, the camera hates me. And it's so true. She's one of the most beautiful women, like in person you go, oh my gosh, like, and you kind of know it's her, but she's got this beautiful bone structure. She's absolutely stunning. Like I was going like that. And she's like, I know, I know. I said, I hate to say it, but yeah. She said, I'm glad you're agreeing with me. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. She said, yeah. She said, I, it, the camera just planes me out. It makes me look just plain. And it's so true. Now, the thing is, is that what, you know, and that, some people, it's like, I tell you what, I'll be like, I'll be in a wheelchair and I'll look the same. Like, I don't know what it is, but like, I look at myself in the mirror and go, oh my God, I look so old. But then I get in front of a camera and I, you know, it's so bizarre. So I don't know. Connie, that's it. She played Connie. Um, oh, no, Owen's not a window dog. Um, Owen is a hoarder. He was my first hoarder. Um, so literally, um, 
you can, it, he has a crate. He likes to go into his crate and I leave the door open during the day. And, um, he goes in his crate and you will find the craziest crap. Oh, he's not gone yet. Chris, don't wish that yet. He's still here, but he's on his way. You know, as I like to say, he's on the conveyor belt. <laughs> It's like, it's like he's on the conveyor belt, but it, you know, it's moving super, super slow. What did cat say? Um, paw print. Ooh, that's cool. Um, yeah, I'm going to take video. I feel like, um, I have a lot of video. One of my favorite videos of Owen is, um, he was walking into the, I literally was coming in from being out and I was walking into the living room and he had a paper bag the handles to a paper bag around his neck because he had obviously tried to steal some food and ripped it off. And so I wrote on it, I'm bad. And I let him walk around with that for a few hours. He was so mad. You know what? I've been giving him good food. The problem is, and I want a dog hoarder, right? I know he is a dog hoarder. You'll go and look in his crate and I'm not kidding. He has like, like toys piled neatly. Okay. And then you'll look and go, what the heck is that? It's like half a treat that I gave him like a week ago. He's hidden it. I mean, that dog has like, I mean, when, when he goes, it's going to be taking a part. <laughs> that crate is going to be like, the hell they keep this for? I had a, I had a, <laughs> I had a Basenji once who literally would steal my boyfriend's underwear and leave it in the bed. And my boyfriend was like, why are you take? I'm like, what are you talking about? I don't take your underwear. Like you're crazy. You know, He's like, I don't know. <laughs> and weeks later I found like seven pairs of underwear in my dog's bed because they're hoarders. Some of them just like to, I'm going to take that. I'm just going to, you know, and I'll have things like a pair, a glove, you know, <laughs> it's an OCD. He really, and by the way, he's an OCD hoarder. So that's true. Uh, Crystal. Oh no, Debbie. He keeps everything in like his, his hoarding is like in categories. So his toy hoarding is on this side. So the stuffed animals are over here so he can lean on them. And then everything else is on the, I'm telling you, he, he has a KonMari method. This dog is like crazy. Um, yeah, I do. Uh, um, Nisha B just said, Tori, just lie down, hug him, close your eyes, enjoy the moments. That's what I've been doing, you know? Um, and, and, um, yeah, let me tell you something. Owen never wanted to share his food. Okay. Another own story. So I, as I mentioned, I had a crate. Well, poor Frank was getting thinner and thinner and thinner because Ga Owen would come in and push him out of the way and eat his food and then go over and eat you know, his own food. So he'd eat Frank's and then his own. And I was like, how am I going to, you know, handle this anyway? So I put his, um, I put Frank, finally I figured it out. I was like, Frank is nimble, man. He can leap up. He was a thin whippet. So I put his bed and his food on top of the crate that Owen slept in worked like a charm. Owen would be sitting there going, ah! and Frank would be up there going, because no one couldn't get up on the top of the crate. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, dogs can hoard food. Yeah. They cats do it more than dogs though. Um, let's see the freaky episode hit the weak part of his back. Oh, wait, wait, I missed part of this. Um, let me just see who said that. Yeah. He, he's on his way out, Christine. It's really sad. Um, okay. Let's see. Um, hi, Melanie. Good to see you. Gavin's doing great. Gavin is like, Gavin's needy. Aw, thank you so much, Sandra. That's so sweet. Um, I feel like we've become a family on this channel. That's what we, that's why we feel for you and Owen. And you know what I think also is that um, we, you know, I like the idea of community. I think that this is, you know, this is our community in the sense that, you know, what I talk about, I want to hear your thoughts too. And um, it's really interesting because it's kind of like sometimes I'll hear somebody come in and they'll just like, explode in some comment and I just come back and go, is there a reason everything's in caps? And they're like, cause I think people don't feel they're heard, you know? And that's the hardest part about all this. Mm. Oh, Zoe, <gasps> she had cancer too. I made sure our last days were filled with tons of love. Sherry Smith. I'm sorry about Zoe. That's, that's, that's hard to hear. You know, I think that, um, 
thank you, Sandra, and thank you for the the super chat. Um, because the things the things that come forward to me in all of this is that you know I've been really kind of stuck with this book I'm working on. I hadn't known what to really do with it, and um, I was teaching the tarot class a little earlier, and all of a sudden it like came to me and it was this moment when I went, it always, always, and you guys know this, you'll always be blessed when you do the right thing for those you love. Somehow, you know, good things really happen. I can't explain it. I mean, you know, like I said, it's been really, it's been a little bit tight financially. I had to go to, I know this sounds like, oh my God, what are you talking about? But I had to go to Europe, right? But I had to go to Europe and I do do a book tour and there were a lot of things that I would have preferred to be here with Owen for. So, um, and so when I'm doing that, I'm not physically making money with my other stuff. So it was funny because somebody said to me, you know, um, and I, I was, when I was talking to Ben about it too, somebody said to me, well, it's, it's a lot of money. And I said, you know what? <sighs> So, and they were like, well, it's just, you know, I wouldn't spend that on a dog. <laughs> I was like, you better hope that somebody will spend that on you. <laughs> and he just went, this is a guy, guy that I've met. And I was like, he just went. And I said, the most important thing is that you give everything you have and then you give another 10% so that when you wake up in the morning, you feel okay with you. You know, that's the key to all this. And, and I, somebody had messaged me and said, can you do a video on self-love on, um, you know, what that looks like? Because they were saying, you know, women are getting the short end of the stick with love. And, you know, I'm going to tell you one of the one of the first ways to discover it is to recognize that love is everywhere if you accept it. And, you know, I love Owen. Owen loves me. I loved Frank. I love Gavin. You know, I love the people in my life that have been there for various times. I think the biggest thing is that I made a decision, and this is something that has to do with all of this idea of self-love and really being there for each other. You know, hard times are going to happen, okay? They are going to happen. We're going to go through pain. We're going to go through loss. Um, you may see me cry. You know, that doesn't mean I'm going to die from it, you know? Um, you know, it's a funny thing when we look at, like, when I talk about Owen and his heart just keeps expanding so much that it's like his heart is so full that he's actually going to die of a full heart. And then when I look at Frank, who was given the medicine to put him down and his heart wouldn't stop, they had to go get more medicine to get his heart to stop. I mean, that's like, you know, how bizarre that one dog was dying of kidney disease and his heart was strong and the other do dog is like got cancer and his kidneys are fine, but his heart is just so full. So what I'm trying to say is that we all go through hard times and the, the thing that I've learned and what my pets have taught me is that it is about living that moment that you want to live, even if you hoped someone else would show up in your life so you could live that moment with that person. Let me share with you what I'm talking about. And I, I don't want to uh, go on forever, but I do want to say this. Um, I have a friend, and I'm going to give him a fake name, call him Pete. And uh, I've known Pete for 40 years. It's uh, a long time. And um, ever since I've known him, um, no, was it? Hold on. Mm, yeah, holy. Wait a minute. Is it right? No, sorry, 33 years. I was thinking, wow, that's a long time. Okay, so th I've known him a long time. And from the time I knew him, he always said I, he'd never been to um, Ireland. Always wanted to go to Ireland. And he said, you know, I've never been to Ireland. And he's Irish. And he said, I've wanted to go see the XYZ city that my ancestors come from. And I want to see this and, you know, a couple sites. And I said, well, why don't you go? He said, well, I'm really waiting for, um, I'm really waiting for the right, the right thing. I'm waiting for the right relationship to come along. Uh, I want to, I want to go with a woman. I don't want to go by myself. And I said, oh, okay. You know, 
and I could understand it. And then, you know, this went on every, every few years, you know, and I was going to Europe, I was going here, doing there. And he'd say, oh yeah, I really wish I could go to Ireland. I go, why don't you just go? Like, forget the woman thing. Why don't you just get a tour and go with people, go with people and tour and see it and be there. And he said, no, no, it wouldn't be special unless it's with someone. And I looked at him and I said, you're someone. But you see, what happens is we think that we have to put our life on hold until that someone shows up to make our life better. And, you know, yes, I'm writing. Yes, I'm sitting there and there are moments I'm hanging with Owen and there are moments I'm not. Because the thing is, is that I know he loves me and he, I love him. But I know in my heart he wouldn't want me to not do something. You know, I wouldn't want him to not do something. You know, when you really love somebody, it is that cliche of set them free, right? But there's also that feeling of knowing that you don't expect them to do something that, you know, strange that they wouldn't want to do. Now, let's get back to Pete. So Pete is now 72. And the last time I talked to him was about a year ago. And, um, you know, he said, yeah. He had just survived a bout of cancer. Boo. He had just survived a bout of cancer. And I said, um, he said, you know, I'm, I'm healthy right now. And I said, get on a plane, go to Ireland. He said, well, I don't know, you know, because it's expensive. And I said, so? And he was like, yeah, but, you know, it's, it's like, and I don't want to go without a woman. I don't want to go if I'm in. I said, you've never been in a long-term relationship. He'd had dates or whatever. You've never, and the one time he he was in a relationship for an extended period of time, she was afraid of flying. So what I said to him is, go, get a tour. I, I'll even help you with some of it. No, 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 no. And this guy has a lot of money packed away. And I remember thinking, wow, he's 72. And I said, go before you're too old to go, you know. And he's putting off his life. And basically what he, the message he's sending out to God in the universe is, I want it my way. And so I'm not going to live my life until you send me what I want. I'm demanding it. And you know what happens when you demand something from the universe? You get nada. You sit there thinking, well, I'm alone and I'm not going to get it. Well, guess what? Get a freaking ticket and go. You know, I learned that as by watching him. And I went, you know what? I'm just going to go. Now, I canceled the trip last year because I know how Frank was. Frank needed me. Owen, <clears throat> he's not the same dog, you know. Um, it's like, oh, yeah, I came to a sad one. <laughs> Kara, I'm so sorry. My dog is a child as I couldn't have children. I love when Owen came in your video. Oh, no, you're looking at Gavin, honey. Not that not, Owen is the white dog. I don't think you've seen him. So it's okay. We're still happy. Happy, happy. Let's be happy. Owen's still here. He hasn't, you know, he hasn't, uh, he hasn't rolled off the, you know, oh, I love greyhounds. Although I have whippets, I love greyhounds. Um, I agree with you on that aspect. What aspect, uh, he, Kate? Um, let's see. I think that a couple things I want to say about when we put off our life for someday, you know, the, there was an old cliche of the road of someday leads to the town called nowhere. And I think after Frank died and I put that, that thing, that opportunity aside and I went, you know what? I'm not doing that again. And I woke up and I went, I know that Owen is not well, but the person who takes care of he and Gavin when I go away is a vet tech and she's probably one of the best in the industry. And I know he will get the best possible care when he is with her. So when I leave here on July 9th and I'm in Los Angeles for 10 days, um, if any of you are, you should come to my event in Burbank. It'll be fabulous. And it's going to be a small group. And I'm going to be talking about, you know, really working with our intuition and, and living just these powerful lives um, and really living, living the dream. <laughs> but I think that... Um, you know, I don't think Owen, and, and every dog is different, every pet, every person, every, 
every moment in our life is different, but please don't put off something that needs to be done in your life. Like, you know, yeah, someday I'll go to London. Somebody said to me, you know, um, actually, this is what happened with a friend of mine. She said, yeah, you know, because I was going to London. This is like two and a half years ago now. I think almost on coming up on three, two and a half years. And um, she said, yeah, um, you know, I've always wanted to go. I said, well, I got an extra ticket. I said, I've got enough frequent flyer miles. If you, you know, if you want, I'll give you a, you can have a coach ticket because I'm not sitting back there, but you can, you know, because I had miles. And I said, but I have just enough miles left. And she said, I'll go. And I went, this girl is going places. And she went. We went to London and this, uh, we've traveled a few times. Hi, baby boy. He said, come here, come here. You want to come here? Let me just get him up. Come here, boy. You don't, you're gonna be you're gonna be fussy, aren't you? All right, let me put you here. Here. Everybody wants to see. Oh, this is the this is the little king prince. Hold on, hold on. He comes into the frame before me. That's Owen. Hey, Owen. He actually looks horrified, but that's okay. There we go. All right. Ah, all right. Sit with us for a second. But she, uh, she's been a great traveling buddy, and we've been to Europe twice. I've, you know, she. By the way, she comes from a family. No one in her family has ever been to Europe. And the thing that I said to her is, don't put off for someday what you can do now. And I think it's true. You know, um, the point is, it's not that it's not that hard to do nowadays. Um, and I think that, I mean, honestly, it didn't. You know, I get a credit card, I put up enough miles, and the ticket's free. Okay, so there's all sorts of ways, you know. Um, thank you, Cruise Boston. That's really lovely. Um, oh, he can't. I'll talk to you about that. Uh, Cruise Boston said, I used to think vacations were a waste of money until my mom died. Then I realized life is short. I vacation every year now, no more staycations. Yeah, and you know, that's the thing is that, um, hey, babe. Do you want to say hi to everybody? Mr. O? Oh, bird. Oh, bird. Yeah. Hey, sweet thing. Okay. You can tell his energy is not 100%. Um, yeah, he's a good boy. Um, I know. I know, Dina, you're like me. Let me look at the dog. I don't care what you have to say. Oh, wing. Um, so, Mosquitoville. Oh, my gosh. Sea sheets. I get it. Um, yeah, he is a sweet boy, but he's also Mr. Mischief. Duty Ron, oh man, I'm so glad you're here. And um, God, I have so many questions for you because on another note, um, yeah, um, a lot of crime is going on. Um, let's see. Um, thank you for the, the super chat, uh, Duty Ron. I really appreciate it, I really do. And uh, Okay, this is Owen's M.O. He starts pushing the computer. This is Owen, by the way. Um, and he'll just start going when he wants me to. Okay, okay, okay. Sit down, sit down. He is in, he's, he's in discomfort, I think. Um, I, I do think he's in discomfort. Um, and I think that he's, uh, he's not doing great. But I wanted to just jump on and say, boy, we've had a year of loss. Um, there's been a lot of um a lot of things that are that are i i gotta say this to you because i think this is important i think this is a year that we should we need to grow up and by grow up i mean there's so many things like this this um the youtuber who uh basically did his suicide note in a youtube video um and um you know the the Thank, thank you. Respect and love to you, Duty Ron. I appreciate it. Um, I mean, we have the YouTuber who who um, self-destructed. And I wanted to do a video on him, not so much about the actual, because uh, Duty Ron did great coverage the other night, by the way, on um, on they found his body. Uh, I think it's Antica, Antica. Um, yes, he did die. Um, he, he, um, he was, and by the way, anybody who has not, I know everybody knows him. Duty Ron is fantastic. He's a retired NYPD detective. Fantastic. Antica. 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 Thank you. Um, and um, yeah. Yeah, that I know. He's fine. 
he's depressed. Look at him. Look at but Gavin's like, Gavin's really like freaked out. Um, anyway, yes, thank you, uh, Duty Ron. It was Atika. And uh, please go like and um, subscribe to Duty Ron's channel. It does great stuff. Um, and the thing I want to say also here is that he did a great thing on uh, Atika's um, suicide and finding the body. And I think that for me, and it's funny because I was going to do something, I was like, oh, you know, um, one of the things that I think is so telling right now is that we look at this young man who had mental dis-ease. And I think he had some, he was a funny guy. You know, if I, I watched some of his videos. And I thought, what a, what a charming young man. But I think he had some serious issues um, with his dad. And his dad was from Ghana. And um, Ghana is not an easy country. Um, I had a, a marketing director at my business, my company, when I lived in L.A., and she was from Ghana and boy, they are just, you know, they're strict. And, and so I think he had a very hard time dealing with the attention and I don't think he knew what to do with it. And so it comes back to what I was saying at the beginning, like just in the middle here of the call of like, you know, we have to see love everywhere in our life in order to experience love internally. Because see, intimacy isn't something we're going to get from someone else. It's something we are. And then the right person, you know, matches that. So I think what happens is when you have someone that has personal wounding, that is 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 you know, it's kind of like the frog in the pot, right? You put a frog in a cold cold water and you turn the heat on and then slowly the frog will boil to death without recognizing it. So when we look at some of these crimes, like, you know, go back to the Watts case, people, people are going to say, why'd she stay? It's like, she didn't know what was going on. She couldn't see it happening. You know, um, thank you. C sheets. I appreciate the, um, the super chat. Thank you so much. It's really kind of you. Um, and uh, it's okay. Let's see, look who knows what's going on. Look. What did you do? Did you pull the computer out? It's all right. See, he knows. Isn't it funny how pets know? Like, he's been like, you know, um, <laughs> Nikki, I go to Europe every year on my own. Pete, Pete, Pete. <laughs> You're funny. Um, sorry, that's a good one. Um, he didn't seem like he was that close to his brother. I think the brother is highly educated. Maybe he, Atika, felt he couldn't live up to that. I was just going to say that to you. I think that what happens is I think that he had, um, okay, so so look at it this way. He was talking about in one of his videos how clever his dad was and what an important person he was. And when I did a little bit of the research, it was like, gosh, he's been, you know, suspected of a lot of crime and, you know, kind of indicted and, hmm, sorry, not indicted. I don't think they indict anybody in Ghana who has money, but, um, but I think that there was a lot of shady, um, I know, right? Gavin's never looked like this. Um, the, uh, there was a lot of shady stuff that um, I think was happening in his family. And I don't think he knew how to deal with it. And I, I think the other thing that's really tough, and let's go one step closer on some of this. Um, I think we really have to look at it like this. You know, we don't know what to do when we see mental illness. We don't. We don't know what to do with it. And it ends up being like, it ends up being something where we go, I think there's a problem. It's okay. I know. Yeah, it's okay. Like, I know there's a problem, but what do you do? Um, yes, 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 yes. Um, here's what I think is going on. All right. And I know that, um, I know Duty Ron's in the house. I'm so glad you're here. Yay. Here's what I think is happening. And you mentioned this, Linda uh, McDonough. I think, McDonough, um, I think one of the things we want to look at, it's not that that crime hasn't always gone on. I think that what's happening is that um, we are trying to find a way to understand and control what's going on in our world. And I think that people who 
never learn to sit with frustration in their life. Let me put it this way. You know, if you don't learn to sit with some frustration, you'll never have success. I can't tell you how many times I remember when I was teaching voiceover or even in, in books, you know, people said to me, I had somebody, this is a perfect example. People, this goes back to the knifing thing. People said to me, you know, Tori, I really want your secret. I go, of what? You know, and they were like, well, you get books published. You know, you've been with big publishers. And I'm like, yeah, I work. <laughs> you know, I work at it. And they're like, but, but, what's, but what's the secret? And I said, to what? And they said, to doing it. I said, I never quit, no matter what never quit. And I give them the impression I'm never going to go away. So that book is going to get published. <laughs> and that's the truth. I don't quit. And I think that the part of it is like, I think of it as like a little dog with a bone and they hold on and hold on and hold on. They're not going to let it go. Most people will quit anything within the first two years. If you make it past the first two years, by the third year, you're kind of like, okay, You'll make a little money. I can kind of get this. But it takes to five years of doing something to be successful at it. Now, this has to do with the frustration of the world. People think that they can go on TV, sing on, you know, Britain's Got Talent, America's Got Talent, go on Shark Tank. Everything's instant. They don't understand that if you really want to make something happen, you have to keep applying yourself. You work really hard at it. And I'm sure like duty Ron, I don't know if you're still here, but you know, you don't just say, I think I'm going to become a police officer. And then you go in and sign a thing and take a test. No, you get a frick lot of training. But what happens is we don't see the people that quit. Oh, okay, cool. We don't, you know, and, and that's the thing I would ask too, is that how many people wash out of cadets? How many people never make it through training? Because you see what happens is we don't honor the people who have tenacity to finish something. We kind of cater to the people who drop out and can't get it together. And don't get me wrong. I think people can do it, but I think they need to know that there is definitely, it's frustrating. You know, I said to somebody recently, because she was like, okay, here's my plan. I'm going to go do... Um, I'm going to go do this uh, this class, and I'm going to get a real estate license. And then once I make money in real estate, I'm going to go over and start becoming a writer. And I went, and she was like, what? I go, that's the craziest thing I've ever heard. She said, what do you mean? I said, you're going to spend three to five years mastering real estate, and then you're going to become a successful realtor. And as the money starts coming in, you're going to be too tired to write. So the reason I say this to all of you is that when we look at what people are not willing to do to achieve something, they are going to hate you for achieving it. And it's not you. It's that they're so frustrated because nobody taught them how to work through frustration. Do you know that I think, this is my opinion, I want to say 50 to 80% of all police officers, their biggest job is teaching people manners. Because people don't know how to behave. Okay, here we go. I was one of 2,200 recruits. Duty Ron said, Tori, you're spot on. I was one of 2,200 recruits. We lost 300 dropouts. And people resigned because it was too tough. And it is tough. You know what? It's tough. I remember my father, somebody telling me, they, they caught the story they wrote about my dad. It was called the Spree de Corps. And it, it was my father had severe asthma. And he went in to become a... a, a uh, a paratrooper in World War II because it paid $50 more a month, he would be running and literally stop on the side of the road and vomit and then keep running. And he just kept going because the thing is, is that it takes, it takes not quitting. And you know what? I'm not saying that there aren't, and I'm, I love that you said that, Kara, you know, um, it's like I, I had to quit nursing because of health issues. I was devastated. Now I have nurses taking care of me and it hurts. Well, here's what I want to say to you. If you want back into the game, get really grateful that there are people out there who are doing what you did just as well. And that tells you that when you get healthy, if you choose to, right, if you can, you can do it again. 
because one of the things I want to say is like, you know, a decorum, Mary, you're so cute. Decorum. I know. I love that. Persistence is the key. You know, I was teaching something uh, every year I do in, in January, January 1st, I do a setting your theme for the year. And I teach people how it works and how to set a theme. And um, Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that um, the... What was I talking about? God, my brain. It's, you know what? It has been the longest week of my freaking life. Um, let's see. Um Great news. I'm excited to join the U.S. Army. Really? Jonathan, good. It's good. You're enlisting. I'd be the first to start up a tattoo fund. <laughs> yeah, you're so funny. You bad. You bad, bad, bad. Um, let's see. Yeah, Carl, I'm sorry. Um, that That's a tough one. You know, listen, the thing is, is that, that we die. People die. Dogs die. Parents die. You know, and and I think that when you look at the stabbings in London, you look at the rage that's coming out, it's because people think that it's supposed to be easy. They think life is easy for those people. They'll look at Duty Ron and they'll look at those guys, you know, the other 1,800 that made it through cadets. Who knows how many of them washed out, right? They go, well, it's easy for them. No, it's not easy for them. They just didn't quit. See, I think that the key to the reason, if you really want what I see underneath the wave, um, and you know what? I'm going to tell you about Dive Under the Wave, and then I'm going to wrap up. So I was teaching. Thank you, Gavin. Gavin, turn the Okay, here we go. I was teaching the... Um, in my chakra oracle class is teaching people. And one of the things I like to teach everybody is I like to teach tools for living, right? So that even though these are intuitive tools for card reading, they're intuitive tools for life. And one of the tools which relates to crime and everything else, which is kind of interesting. One of the tools I taught people is that, um, yeah, merchandising. I know, I got to do that, but whatever. Um, one of the tools that I teach is it's called diving under the wave. And here's how it works. A um, number of years ago, it's about 10 years ago, another, if you remember, there was a big tsunami in Thailand and um, many people died. And I know people who were there. Um, basically what happened was the story came out, um, but the this couple had rented a little rowboat with a guide he was rowing and they were just going to go scuba diving. So they go out in the boat and they get out into the water and they're in the water and they, you know, go off the side to scuba dive and the, the boat stays up on top with the guide and he was sitting in the boat. So they're down there and all of a sudden when they're down in the water, they felt them lift up and then just gently be brought down. They didn't know what that was. So about 20 minutes later, I guess they came to the top of the, sur the top, the surface, they, surfaced. They look around and the boat's gone. There's nobody there. And they're like, why did you know, he didn't wait. So they start swimming to shore and they decide to swim to shore. And so they're swimming to shore, swimming to shore. And it's like, and suddenly they're swimming past the hotel. And something's really wrong here because they're swimming and lawn chairs are swimming with them. So the, the point is that, and it was quite tragic actually, because um, they lost one of their children in it. Uh, their son survived. But the, the thing that's really important about this story is that they dove under the wave and they did not even feel the effects of the tsunami. So what, what happened, and the reason I teach this as an important thing, is that because they didn't physically experience it, they didn't have the trauma of the tsunami. So when I talk about diving under the wave, I invite people to just stand still and imagine you're in a field and you're just in this very peaceful field, it's beautiful, and you look out and all of a sudden you see this huge wave. It's like, it's like 20, 30 feet high and it's coming right at you. 
and you're looking at it and you're going, whoa, whoa. And you know, your heart kind of goes, because you see it. And then I'm going to invite you three, two, just about now dive under. And I want you to notice energetically that when that you, you dive under that wave and it goes over you, right? You're down there and you can drop your shoulders and you're peace. You're peace. So what I want to say to you is that when I say to people dive under the wave, it's like stuff is going to come at you. But we've got to dive under the wave and find that peace again and kind of go, okay. And then we can come back up and get back into training or do whatever we need to do. Um, let me see. Yeah, Destiny, uh, you said something interesting. You know, I think that what it is, and Destiny said, just for those of you, she said, I'm feeling very stagnant in my life, which has caused a lot of depression recently. And my refusal to just give up is all that's kept me going. Life's not supposed to be easy or fair. It's how we cope. And I want to give you a possible reframe there. So if we look at it like, um, and that's, by the way, very insightful. Um, one of the things that comes forward to me in that is that what if, what if that, um, you know, maybe feeling stagnant is the healing you need? Like sometimes the stagnate, the stagnation, you've made meaning of it. In other words, it brings the depression. But part of that also what brings forward is that your tenacity of not giving up. But sometimes, and my dad used to say this all the time, sometimes when you get kicked, stay down. And the reason I say that to you is sometimes it's just about like, you know, just, just resting and knowing that you don't have to cope. It's going to get better. You just have to recognize that it's a time of frustration. You're frustrated and you don't know what to do. And you will soon enough, you know. It's just you will know. I promise you. Um, it, it, it's, it's so interesting. I did a, a, a class tonight and I'm going to wrap up in just a minute. Um, but <clears throat> I talked about, let me just share with you what we talked about tonight. Cause I said, cause we're talking about, I was talking about the use of cards for your own self-awareness. And we were talking about the three stages of listening, right? It's kind of like, I'm not listening what do I need to listen to? And what will really help me if I listen more closely, right? Um, I agree. Stagnation actually um, can, um, can also just lead to more depression, maybe new choices. So what I did was I pulled three cards for this person. And we looked at these three cards. And part of what came forward was I was able to say, oh, well, this tells me, you know, that... Um, that you basically are have been through so much pain in your life, you're trying to protect other people from it. And therefore, and here's, I'll just share with you, um, if I can find them, I'll pull the cards because it was very interesting. Yeah, they're right here. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so these were the cards. This this was the first one, the moon, right? Don't be scared. It's not to be scared. It's just an image. The moon, nine of wands, beautiful image, and then the world, which is just you know, the God consciousness. So I looked at it and I looked at the cards and I said to her, you know, I said, it looks like you're really trying to increase your business, your practice. She was like, yeah. I said, well, when I look at the moon, which is the dark night of the soul, it means unafraid to go inside and face what you need to face, whatever that is, frustration, upset, uh, turbulence, not having the tools. Most people don't have the tools to work through this, right? And then the second one, this is a card of emotion, the nine of wands being overwhelmed because she's been holding a wand that's on fire. And the idea here is and to make it, to bring it together. And the reason I'm sharing it is because what, what I said to her was that you are trying to, because she's a therapist, of course, you're trying to protect people from feeling this level of pain and experience. This is yin and yang, it's the dark night of the soul. It's really the moon showing you who you are. And sometimes that's not pleasant. And I said, the, part, the issue is that you're not letting people see who they are. You're trying to protect them from that moment 
but it's kind of like skipping a step. It'd be like, you know, if I said this to duty wrong, it'd be like skipping the part in the police academy where they teach you how to shoot the gun. I mean, you know, how to use a firearm. You know what I mean? Like there's, we are skipping the part in our lives where we're teaching each other that it's okay to be frustrated and that I'm going to be there for you. I'm not going to leave you. You know, I think that's the thing that in going full circle with my pet, I'm not going to leave him. I'm going to be there right to the end. When he takes his last breath, I'm going to be there. Now, if I'm physically there, thank God. But you know what? And I, I think I will be. But Deidre, thank you so much for the super chat. That's very kind of you. Yeah, I just thank you. Um, though I know it's a blessing in disguise, it's still heavy. You know what I'm going to say to you, Destiny? Please forgive me. It sucks. It's not a blessing. <laughs> It sucks to me. Can I tell you something? I spent a year depressed and I didn't even know until I looked back and I went, wow, I was really depressed. You know, and the other thing, you know, when you, it's kind of like the old, you know, how you're really depressed, right? You're really depressed when they give you some kind of like sedative or painkiller and you don't feel it. You're just kind of like, okay, I feel somewhat normal. It's like, wow, we just gave you three Valiums. Well, I'm fine. Let's move on, you know. Um, yeah, exactly, Duty Ron. And that's the thing is that we skip the parts of our life. We skip the pain because we think that it's going to hurt when the truth is not experiencing pain is more painful. Think about it. How many times have you stayed in relationships that were like, oh, God, I don't want to be here. And then when you left, you're like, whew, whew, you know. It's like, I'm so glad I'm over it, you know? And, and that's the thing. It's kind of like when we look at the ability to look at ourselves, to really look at ourselves, then we can kind of, and that's why watching um, that young man, the YouTuber who took his own life, there was so much frustration and upset because he just didn't have any idea of how to work through it. You know, and I, even in his, his goodbye video, you know, um, him saying, well, I just didn't want to, I just don't think he didn't have the tools. He didn't have the tools. Think about it. If, if I said to you, okay, uh, guys, go, uh, go build a house. I'd be like, what? Well, we need tools. I don't have any tools. That's what this guy's life was like. He had been catapulted up and he had no tools to deal with his own frustrations and of course he's going to tear himself down um, because that's the thing too, is that somewhere, you know, and, and duty Ron could probably speak to this more than anything else, but it's kind of like, forgive me for putting it this way, but you know, in the mafia, right? Mafia people are like, I don't want you to be successful. You'll be out in the limelight. We don't need that kind of attention. So it's kind of like, you know, this guy may not have been, you know, he may not have been supposed to have this kind of attention. So I think that the deep, deep sadness that he had and the, and the, and the anger and God bless him for not blaming other people. I mean, I think that, but the, the whole gimmick is that when you say that everybody goes, Oh, it's my fault. You know? And the thing is, is that he was right. He didn't want to listen, but I think there's another piece to that. He didn't know how to listen. Think about that. We don't know how to listen to each other. Look at what's being attacked. The bullying right? I mean, one only needs to watch a, a, a debate or, you know, go on to YouTube and see people say hateful damn things, you know? And, and I think that it's not just bullying. It's an inability to listen and talk and communicate in a way that's going to change lives. And I'm telling you, that's what I'm a stand for. If people are going to be like hateful, but bye, bye it's almost funny, you guys. I think I have more people blocked because zero tolerance than I actually have people following. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, Jules said he was being bullied and losing subscribers, and I believe that. Um, I think, you know, I think the thing is, is that um, Chris just said it. We have a tendency to knock each other too often. I think it's like we want to build each other up, and then we want to build up our celebrities, and then once they, we think they're, doing it wrong, we want to rip them down. That's just the way it is. I think Barbara Streisand said that once. She said, you know, that's the problem with publicity is that you, you, you know, the, the public builds you up and then they want to just bring you right down. I thought, wow, that's 
pretty, you know. And this is the key, Sonia, and this is full circle. This is where I'm going to wrap up tonight is by saying that what we have here, ladies and gentlemen, is a failure to communicate. And here's another piece to that. We have a failure to wait for the outcome. We automatically think that if I prevent someone from feeling pain, I'm helping them. And that is the worst thing you can do is to try to fix their pain. Just say, I mean, you know, and I know, um, um, you know, duty run, I know you went through a hard time and that the thing I can, I can certainly be there for you, but I can't go through it for you. And that's the way, that's the way life is, you know? Um, let's see. Oh Yeah. You know, I think the thing Priscilla just said, I walk away from negativity. I think what happens is I walk away from things that just don't feel right. You know, I have like a friend, like I said, she's the angriest woman in America and I'll see her when I'm in LA and I love her. She's super angry, she's super negative, funny as hell. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm, I'm entertained. Now, I'm not gonna get rid of her, but you know what? If I felt it bothered me, I would, I would leave. And I think that's the difference. So yes, please like, subscribe to Duty Ron. Also, everybody, if you think of it, give the video a thumbs up. It does help. And um, also, um, yeah, super angry. I know she is so, so angry. It's so funny. Um, you know, I think, uh, Carolyn, I think you just said like a, one of the, the keys here is, um, oh, where are you here? Okay. Yes, you can't live anyone's life for them. But I think if we go to the true crime thing, isn't that what, um, isn't that what a lot of these people try to do? They try to either control the way someone else is going to live or they try to live it for them. And I think that's a, that's a big problem. Uh, thanks, Dawn. It's good to see you. Um, okay. Uh, Geneve. Yeah. If, um, and just so you know, if, um, if you send an email through, you can send it to support at Tori Hartman. My assistant reads them and she responds. And it's one of those things where if she feels that it's, um, that someone's just being mean, you know, um, she knows she's like, I'm not sending it on to you. It's only going to upset you. I'm like, I love you. So, you know, Priscilla, it's kind of like my soul is hurting. How about that? My soul is hurting. Um, and it, just a quick shout out before we wrap up tonight. Black Rose 11, uh, Jessica Salas, um, Salas um, and where are you? Cruise Boston, man. You know, I don't know. Like you can't, you can't get such stellar people seriously. And, um, I'm going to be doing more with, with my cards, probably just some short videos on that, but I won't give up true crime. I really enjoy talking about it. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, Priscilla, I think my whole soul hurts because, um, I really love Owen and, um, uh, let's see. Oh yeah. Right. Dawn. Thanks for the reminder. Dawn just said, Capricorn, Saturn return, big stuff hit for some of us. Yeah, thank you. That's so true. Um, thanks, Jess. I mean, I think the thing is, is that um, it is so hard to, um, it's hard. It's hard to, you know, you lose your equilibrium. And when my Frank died, oh my God. Frank, I kept Frank alive. It was, it was really kind of sad. I mean, that poor dog. I mean, it was almost like a, he was a carcass. <laughs> he like he finally looked at me the last morning and he went, because I told him he couldn't die till I finished my last book. So he lived that long. Um, but, oh yeah, Jupiter, Saturn, uh, all in Capricorn right now. And uh, uh, Pl uh, Pluto. Yeah, Jupiter, exactly. Um just saw the list of words that get you demonetized. It's too long and crazy. Oh, Cruz Boston, would you do me a favor and get me those the list of words that get you uh, the money taken off? They have literally gone in, and I'm not kidding. I have a Friday night chat that they demonetized. They went and took 
anything that said Menendez brothers, they anything that said like Adnan Said, well, half the Cindy Watts videos have been demonetized. I mean, it's crazy. Um, because I was doing okay with them. When I say okay, like not a killing, you know, but like, oh, okay, I have enough to pay the bills, you know. Um, some of them. Um uh, thanks, do you, Ron? I really appreciate it. I'm gonna be up in New York again. And um, when I am, you know, and I'm going to VidCon, everybody, uh, which is the big YouTube thing that's going to be in uh, two weeks. And um, I know, I think uh, I really do need to find out what the words are so that I can um, change them. It's going to be too late for some of that. Um, what? A man with the real last name Dyke can't use it anymore. <sighs> you know, it's kind of like, do you know that, that I think in one of them I talked about, I talked about bad behavior, right? And, um, and I got, I got, uh, take it. Yeah. They said so. There's a man with the name Dyke can't use his name anymore. YouTube said so. It's ridiculous. <laughs> So if a guy's named Dick, I mean, <laughs> what, um, yeah, no, you're, they're not kidding. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, I'm, I'm in, I'm in a fair amount of pain. Um, <laughs> my God, how do we call? What do we call Dick Van Dyke? Well, the good news is, I think he's too old to do a YouTube channel, so he won't get demonetized. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're putting life on my sofa. I miss you, Mr. Mister. Good to see you. So I am, yeah, as you can see, it's been a long, long, uh, yeah, the demonetization police have come and uh, they have arrested quite a few of my videos. Um, and, you know, it's been hard to be on here because I was like, you know, it's sad and it's funny. Dick Van Dyke would be, would be a, uh, Blacklisted. Um, I don't know what that is. Sorry. I don't, sorry. Yeah, we just leave that. I went. I grew up with a guy named James Dick. True story. He went on to become a police officer. <laughs> of course he did, but he can't get a YouTube channel. <laughs> oh, thanks, guys. Well, I have just enjoyed being with you tonight, and thank you. It's been a long week, and um, I will actually be here at home on the 4th, so I might do a live. Um, and I, I, I'm going to be here because, um, um, yeah, I think that uh, I'd be, um, you know, I can't leave Owen, so I'll be here. Um Put your left hand on your right shoulder and then put your right hand on your whole shoulder. Aw, Cap, we're getting huggies. I used to tell Owen that when he was a puppy. I'd go, do you want a huggy? And he'd come running over and then stand still. So cute. Okay, thank you, love. All right, guys. <laughs> You're going to mess with me, Dawn. We're going to be done. Something going to take me off the air. So... Uh, I wanted to say good night to everyone, and I hope you have a peaceful and blessed night. Um, I'm going to try and get some sleep. It's been a little stressful, and um, I am sending you lots of prayers and good wishes. Um, and just also, you know, people who have crossed this year, Judy Ron's mom, you know, rest in peace. Just rest in peace. And, um, you know, and also for all of the first responders who keep us safe every freaking day and do that thankless job for us so that we can do what we need to do. All right. Much love, everybody. I'm always here for you. Love to hear your thoughts on things. And I hope I get to meet some of you. If any of you are in LA, please come to uh, my event. Uh, it'll be on the site. So, all right, babes. Love you all madly. I'm going to end the stream. Good night. Rest well like the video, share the video, tell your friends to come do the video, subscribe to the channel. It all helps. Love you. Good night. Bye for now. Oh, and remember, say what you mean, mean what you say, but don't say it mean. Be kind to each other out there. <laughs>